What is up everyone and welcome to part 6 of our iOS development course. Here we're going to learn how to display text within an app. It's a very important part of pretty much any app as you'll likely need to display some sort of label or text throughout the app's execution. So we're going to talk about how to display text we're going to talk also about how to add UI elements and use them. So when we add UI elements to code, we can get access to their properties and attributes, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to interact with the UI label, we'll be able to change the text attribute, and then this will be able to display the exact text that we want. So we're going to start off with a label. We're going to add it to the page or the screen as a variable, and then we can access and modify the properties. In our case, again, we're just going to be using the text property, although there are many others that we can modify, so we'll explore those a little bit as well. So let's head on over to the code. And as you can see, I have this project started up. This is iOS development. If you remember when we were exploring Xcode, I started a project called iOS development um, that's exactly what this is, starting out with a blank page. You'll want to get yourself a project started up. Uh, I have also my playground here, by the way. I just minimized it. And we're only going to be working view controller, so as soon as you open that up, you can actually close that panel up there. Okay. So if we run this app right now, it's just going to show a plain white screen. There's nothing on the storyboard, and there's nothing in the view controller. What we want to do is simply display a label with some text. That text can say whatever we want on it. So the first step will be to create the label to hold the text, then we can change the text, then we can add it to the screen. So I think probably the simplest way of doing this is creating a variable in here, or you can create the label and then um, work with it within view did load. But for now, we're just going to work with everything in here. Okay. So make sure it's within this view did load function. This is essentially the one that is called as soon as this screen comes into play. So there will be a screen associated with this view controller. As soon as it appears on your device, this function is called. So this is used to do all the setup. So we'll start off with a constant. That's, this is just going to be our label. Okay. And this is going to be an instance of a UI label. Okay. So we we'll want to select this guy. And we'll actually want to pass in a frame right away. Okay, so this frame is going to need an argument. This argument is going to be a CG rect. So this stands for core graphics rect or core graphics rectangle. So a rectangle is going to have four coordinates. It's going to have an X and a Y position, and it's going to have a width and a height. We need to specify all four of those in this label. Now, Generally speaking, it's a good idea to take different screen sizes into account, so you probably don't want to use absolute numbers like 50 or 100. However, we're not really building a real app. We're just using this tutorial and this project to explore some app concepts, so it's okay in our case. If you want more uh, tips on app development techniques, then feel free to take some of our other courses. However, for now, we're just going to create a rectangle. So let's create something called a label rect. This is going to be a CG rect, like so. If we open up the brackets, you'll see there's a few constructors we can use. So um, it doesn't really matter which one. I would recommend using one of these guys, these last three. Okay, this allows us to enter an X and a Y position and a width and a height. For now, we'll just do something like 50 for the X position. 100 for the Y position, a width of maybe 200, and a height of 100. Doesn't really matter what figures you enter in here. You'll probably want at least these numbers, just to, at least like, I don't know, you could do 100s on all of them. That will make sure that it's big enough to hold some text. Okay, so when we create this label, we're going to pass in our label rect. You could alternatively just use this right in here. You don't have to create the variable, but that's up to you. Okay, so we have a label. We have its sh its position and its size, and now we want to assign some text to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to call upon our label dot, and now this will give us access to all of the properties. There are lots of properties, attributes, functions that we can call upon this. Note that we can um, give it some attributed text, we can change its font, we can change whether it's highlighted or not, we can set the number of lines, we can change the text itself, text color, we can change the background color, etc. For now, all we're going to do is we're going to set some text. 
Note that this text is optional, is an optional string. The reason it's an optional string is because this is used to both set the text and retrieve the text. So if I said something like variable sum string is equal to my label text. This label might not have text. So that's why this is optional, okay? Because if this label doesn't have text, then this will take on the value of nil. In our case, we're not retrieving anything, we're actually setting something. So we're just gonna say label.text is equal to, and then we're just going to set some string. So remember, strings are used to represent text data. So this is a perfect chance for this. So feel free to enter whatever string you like. I'm just gonna say, hello, my name is Nimish like so. Okay, this should fit all on one line, but just in case it doesn't, I'm going to say label dot number of lines is equal to two. This will make sure that this fits over multiple lines if needs be. Okay, cool stuff. So we have a rectangle with a specific size and uh, position. We have a text assigned to this label. We have uh, the number of lines set. So now all that's needed is to add this to our main screen. So every view controller controls a specific view. So if we call upon view, you'll see that this is a view that uh, this view controller manages. We want to add every UI element to this view or to some child of this view. We'll talk more about child hierarchies in a few sections from now. For now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say view.add subview. Okay, note that this takes in a UI view. Well, a label is actually a subclass of UI view. So we can actually just pass in our label here. So basically we're taking our view, our overall screen view, and we're adding this label to it. This label has all of these properties. And so we should see this label with, hello, my name is Nimish, or whatever text you put there, displayed when we go to run it. So that's gonna be our next step. Let's go ahead and we can run this guy. So build succeeded, it's looking good so far. Let's see if there are any errors here. Okay, there we go. So um, 50 is not very far from the edge and 100 is not very far from the edge there. So you can see that we get this nice label with whatever text you assigned. It only spans um, just a little bit. So we weren't, we weren't actually, we didn't actually need this number of lines equal to two, but just in case if you have a large font or a lot of text, then it might overflow. Okay, but that is it for this tutorial. You've learned how to add or how to create UI views, in this case, a label. You've learned how to change some properties of these UI views, and you've learned how to add them to our screen with this view.add subview. In the next section, we'll be actually going back to the language basics. We'll need to learn a little bit more before covering the next part of our app development tutorial. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.